Okay, there guys, can we start now? Yes, so uh okay. So we had discussed dh and du dh and du for a uh, ideal gas okay so next we are going to see the relation of of cp and cv relation of CP and CV, okay? You see for ideal gas, what we have done, DH is equals to N CP DT and DU is equals to N CV DT for ideal gas, correct? So if I write down the expression of DH is equals to DU plus PDV, Further, dh is equals to du plus nrdt, pdv is equals to nrdt for a given number of moles. If you divide this by dt, dh by dt, du by dt, nr by dt. So dh by dt is nothing but what? ncp, this expression you see. DU by DT is NCV plus NR. So what we get here? CP minus CV is equals to R. This is the relation of CP and CV we have. Correct. Cp minus Cv is equals to R. Remember, this is molar specific heat capacity. Okay. Molar specific heat capacity is this. Okay. One more relation you see. We have this relation CP minus CV is equals to R. One question they have asked in NEET, uh, a similar kind of question I'm giving you for one mole of, of N2 gas, which relation is correct? is correct. First option is CP minus CV is equals to 14 R. CP minus CV is equals to R by 14. CP minus CV is equals to 28 R. CP minus CV is equals to R by 28. This was the question asked. Okay. So this question, obviously we are looking for CP minus CV is equals to R, that kind of relation. But in this option, this CP and CV is given here 
the specific heat capacity it is not molar heat capacity all these are cp and cv this i am telling you okay it is not mentioned in the question question is this only till this option d are specific heat capacity right which is per gram we have this is per mole correct so the relation we have is cv is equals to the molecular mass into cv this is the capital one is specific heat and this is the smaller one molar heat right so in the option this cp and cv are specific heat capacity is it is not molar heat capacity so if i write down for nitrogen the expression is what for n2 the specific heat capacity sorry the molar heat capacity cp is equals to we can write the specific heat capacity cv divided by the molecular mass of nitrogen and cv is equals to this is a specific heat right sorry molar heat capacity is equals to the specific heat capacity cv divided by 28 so the relation that you have over here that is cp minus cv is equals to r where cp and cv are the molar heat capacity in terms of specific heat this would be cp minus cv divided by 28 28 equals to r so cp minus cv is equals to 28 r the relation we have where this cp and cv r the specific heat capacity specific heat capacity understood this this kind of question also they ask in the exam Understood this? In doubt? Okay. So you must have done degree of freedom in physics, right? F degree of freedom. Correct. okay so that value f that value f we are going to use over here degree of freedom is actually the topic of physics only so we'll just use the value okay so we have this relation that is uh, cp minus cv is equals to r and the ratio of cp and cv is given by a term gamma This is gamma. This we call it as Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio gamma. Okay. So CP by CV is equals to gamma. So if you solve CP is equals to gamma CV. So CV is equals to R divided by gamma minus one. This is the relation we have. r divided by gamma minus 1 and cp if you find out it is gamma cv so gamma r by gamma minus 
gamma r by gamma minus 1 okay in terms of degree of freedom if you see the formula of cv you must remember it is f by 2 into r f is the degree of freedom what is the value i'll give you but this formula you must memorize f is the degree of freedom okay now you see this all these relations we have done the value of f degree of freedom for various different gases is Okay, this table you write down. We have atomicity. Then we have CV. Then we have CP. CP is equals to CV plus R. And the last one we have gamma, which is CP by CV. So when the atomicity is one, like monoatomic gas, if you have, that is helium, neon, argon, etc., monoatomic gas, the value of CV is 3 by 2 R, right? CP, you just need to add 1. So 5 by 2 R, gamma is 1.33. 5 by 3, that is 1.33. If you have diatomic, H2, N2, O2, it is 5 by 2 R, this one is 7 by 2 R, and this one is 1.40. Polyatomic, polyatomic, for example, we have SO3, NH3, etc., this kind of gases. The value of CV is 3R, this is 4R, and this is 1.33. Sorry, first one is what? 5 by 3, no, so this one is 1.66. So gamma value of monoatomic gas is maximum. One more formula we have for gamma. Gamma is equals to 1 plus 2 by F. F is the degree of freedom. So you can substitute the value of F, you'll find out gamma. Atomicity of the gas and DOF, degree of freedom. If it is 1, degree of freedom is 3. If it is 2, degree of freedom is 5. If it is greater than or equal to 3, degree of freedom is 6. You see F value, if you substitute here,
this formula you must remember degree of freedom calculation uh, we can also do but that is not required okay only just value you keep in mind that is more than enough Okay, finished. Uh, one more um, law we have here, just statement you need to know. You won't get any uh, numerical question on this. And the name is zeroth law of thermodynamics. See, the simple meaning is what? If suppose A is in, A is a system, is in thermal equilibrium with B, right? This is in thermal equilibrium with B. And B is also in thermal equilibrium with an another object system, that is C. This kind of arrangement we have. A is in thermal equilibrium with B, B is in thermal equilibrium with C. So according to zeroth law of thermodynamics, if these two cases are there, then A is also in thermal equilibrium with C. This is what zeroth law of thermodynamics says. Statement you write down. If two systems if two system are in thermal equilibrium with a third system, if two system are in thermal equilibrium with a third system, then the two system, no, let me write this, two systems are in thermal equilibrium with the third system, then they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. Then they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. Okay, this is a statement we have here. Done. You want me to go back, Priyam? Okay. Yeah. Now, you see, we have done all these processes and all. Next, we need to see the calculation of work done.
calculation of work done. First process we are having because different different process will have different expression, right? So first process we are uh, assuming here is isothermal expansion. Isothermal expansion. So expansion is taking place and without changing in temperature. So delta T is zero in this process. Okay. Since we have delta T zero, so change in internal energy is zero because temperature is constant. Internal energy is a function of temperature. We have expansion, so work done by the system, right? So we have delta Q is equals to minus W. Heat absorbed, delta Q positive, work done by the system, delta Q negative, sorry, W negative, okay? So heat absorbed and work done by the system, okay? Now, if you see enthalpy over here, delta H is equals to delta U plus P delta V. Delta U is zero, right? Delta U is zero and P delta V for chemical reactions, if I talk about, for chemical reaction, we can write delta H is equals to delta U plus NR delta T. So since the process is isothermal, delta V in U we know is zero, delta T also zero. So delta H, the enthalpy change in isothermal process for a chemical reaction is also zero. So all these information you must have. Okay, so these three two things you must keep in mind for isothermal expansion. Now we'll see the work done. So work done in, I am assuming first irreversible, irreversible, the process is isothermal only. So irreversible isothermal expansion. Irreversible isothermal expansion. Irreversible process. Pressure is constant or not? Irreversible. Pressure is constant or not? Irreversible process. The external pressure is constant. Right? Expansion takes place against constant external pressure. So P external is constant, first of all. P external is constant. If you talk about expansion, so we have two types of expansion here, right? The first one is free expansion. Free expansion means expansion in vacuum. Okay, example is what? Expansion in, in vacuum, where P external is zero. So in this case, work done is also zero because it's vacuum, we don't have any pressure. No, external pressure is not there. So P external is zero. So work done is also zero, free expansion. Second one is intermediate expansion. Intermediate expansion. Intermediate expansion when external pressure is less than the gaseous pressure. So I'll write down in notation here, P external is less than the pressure of gas. So hence the gas will push the piston up and expansion takes place. So in this case, the work done DW is equals to 
minus p external dv right so if you integrate it i have taken p external inside now v1 to v2 but since p external is constant so work done w is equals to minus p external v2 minus v1 correct this is the formula we have for irreversible process copy it. done okay now next one you see work done in reversible isothermal expansion second one write down reversible isothermal expansion so we have uh, you know already discussed it last class i'll just quickly go through it suppose we have a piston cylinder system right right this is the piston cylinder system we have okay this is the p external this is p external and this is the pressure of gas okay so initially what happens external pressure is equals to the pressure of gas p external equals to the pressure of gas is equals to p we are assuming okay and the piston is starting it is not moving now if p external the external pressure decreases by a value a very small value by dp then the then the change in volume change in volume is dv assuming it right so work done in this process dw is equals to minus p external minus dp this is the decrease in pressure p external minus dp into dv this is the work done we have correct now in order to get the expression we'll integrate it okay so what we have here you see integration of dw is equals to minus p external dv this is positive only plus integration of dp 
dv. These two values are are very small, so we can ignore this. dp is very small, dv is very small, so the product is even smaller, right? So we'll ignore this. P external is nothing but pressure of P. This is what we have assumed. So I'll substitute here minus integration P dV. Now we integrate it V1 to V2, initial volume to final volume. dW is zero to W. Okay. So what we get here, since P external is not constant, Pressure is what? Sorry, the process is reversible. External pressure varies. So we'll write W is equals to minus integration V1 to V2 NRT by V into dV. Now we'll just solve this and we'll get the expression of W is equals to minus 2.303 NRT log V2 by V1 this is the expression of work done we have in this we can also add one more thing here yes one second i'll go back Done. Okay. This is the expression. Now you see what we can write down here. Since we have isothermal process, so P1 V1 is equals to P2 V2 we can write. Isothermal process. So what is V2 by V1? Is P1 by P2, correct? So we can also substitute V2 by V1 as P1 by P2 in this expression. So in terms of pressure, the expression of work done would be minus 2.303 NRT log P1 by P2. So if pressure is given, you can directly use this expression to find out the answer. Done, finished. So isothermal we have done. Now we'll see adiabatic. In case of adiabatic expansion, how do we find out work done? Second process, write down. adiabatic expansion. Now this expansion could be irreversible as well as reversible. Both, right? Irreversible as well as reversible. Both ways possible. So what happens if you have irreversible expansion? Right? In case of
irreversible expansion okay irreversible expansion we can again have free as well as intermediate free expansion we all know it's the expansion in volume so p external is zero p external is zero when p external is zero work done zero right work done zero we have adiabatic process so delta q zero delta q zero work done zero so delta u zero right delta u zero and uh, delta t is also zero because there is no exchange of heat adiabatic so whatever the temperature will have it is constant only since work done is also zero and delta h is also zero all these things will be zero in free expansion in case of intermediate expansion again we have the same expression intermediate expansion against a constant external pressure work done we can find out by again this formula minus p external delta v so answer is minus p external delta v is d2 minus v1 so this is the process of work done Done. Same formula. So basic formula of work done is this only. From this only we'll find out the formula. So irreversible expansion is this. In case of reversible expansion, all we are doing under adiabatic process. Okay. So it is reversible expansion. You see. Reversible expansion. so in case of reversible expansion since you have expansion so work done by the system expansion is always work done by the system okay negative minus p delta v it is reversible so p external is not constant variable okay so now you see one thing we have reversible we have adiabatic process okay we have adiabatic process so q is equals to 0 delta u is equals to w okay delta u is equals to w so work done by the system if you see so obviously internal energy will decrease okay work done by the system system will do work at the cost of its own energy right so if you have work done by the system by the system means delta u is equals to minus w negative this side so it means internal energy internal energy decreases means what temperature of the system also decreases work done by the system internal energy decreases temperature also decreases we know we can always write for one mole for one mole 
du is equals to cv dt du is nothing but work done right so work done is equals to cv dt we have okay work done is cv dt work done is p delta v so we'll equate this one and this one copy down this first Okay, so work done is CVDT. Further, work done is equals to CV. DT is T two minus T one. Okay, if you multiply and divide by R here, CV by R into T two minus T one. Okay. R we can write CP minus CV. So R CV. This R will write CP minus CV. T two minus T one. Just the simplification we are doing. Okay. Then you divide this CV this side. So work done is R into T two minus T one divided by gamma minus one. This is the expression of work done. For adiabatic process, no doubt. It's adiabatic, not isothermal. It's adiabatic, not isothermal. Delta T was zero and irreversible. We are talking about reversible now. Okay, condition you must take care of. Yeah. Okay, another one more form of this we can write. If you multiply with R and temperature here, you'll get R T two minus R T one by gamma minus one. R T two we can write P two V two minus P one V one divided by gamma minus one for one mole. any one formula any one of these two formula you can use in order to find out the answer Clear? Done? Okay. Now you see one relation for adiabatic process. We have work done. Is equals to C V delta T is equals to Minus P delta V, both are work done only. We can equate. Okay, for a very small change, we can write C V D T is equals to minus P D V. Okay, so if you integrate this, what we can write integration of cv dt is equals to negative of p is 
आर टी बाय बी डी वी कंसिडरिंग एन इज इक्वल्स टू वन वन मोल सो फर्दर इट इज सी वी डी टी बाय टी इज इक्वल्स टू माइनस इंटीग्रेशन आर इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट वी कैन टेक आउटसाइड डी वी बाय वी CV is also a constant, so we have CV by R negative sign dt by t is uh, we have suppose ln t and dv by v is ln v. You can also put the limit here. v1 to v2 t1 to t2 here also we have t1 to t2 limit and v1 to v2 limit so further it would be cv ln t2 by t1 is equal, i'll go back one second Minus R ln v2 by v1. I have taken this here like this. Reason I'll tell you. See if you have this expression. One second, just Cp minus Cv is equals to R. So from this you can find out R by Cv. Divide Cv both sides. So Cp by Cv minus one equals to R by Cv. So R by Cv is equals to Cp by Cv is nothing but gamma minus one. So we'll substitute this here. So what we have ln t two by t one is equals to r by Cv ln v two by v one. One second, I'll go back. R by Cv is gamma minus one. So ln t two by t one is equals to gamma minus one. Minus gamma minus one ln v two by v one. One second, Anusha. We have done this derivation. You see. first of all what we did just a second i'll go back i have done this work done expression we have done work done is cv dt and then just we simplify it expression of work done will get this what we did we'll multiply and divide by r over here so r into cv by r this r i have written as cp minus cv and then if you divide here this cv if you take here in the denominator cp by cv is gamma minus 1 and in numerator we have one over here in the numerator So R into T two minus T one divided by gamma minus one. This is the formula of work done. We have. If you multiply R with T two and T one here, you'll get this. R T two is nothing but P two V two. R T one is nothing but P one V one by gamma minus one. This is the another formula for one more. This is a work work done expression for reversible adiabatic expansion. okay now after this we have this work done is cv delta t which we can always write it as minus p delta v for very small change delta t is dt and dv is dv delta v is dv then we integrate it just since the process is reversible pressure is not constant so rt by v for one mole Cross multiply this, we'll get this expression, and we integrate it. Copy this down.
Done. dt by t we can cross multiply this no this t i can take this here this t is here dv by v r is outside just cross multiply this t here and v is here okay yeah Now R by CV value we calculated gamma minus one. So what we can write ln T2 by T1 is equals to ln V1 by V2 to the power gamma minus one. Can we write this? No doubt. Then T2 by T1 is equals to V1 by V2 to the power gamma minus 1. And when you cross multiply this, we'll write T2 V2 to the power gamma minus 1, T1 V1 to the power gamma minus 1 to the power gamma minus 1, which further means that T V to the power gamma minus one equals to constant. This is the condition for adiabatic process. T V to the power gamma minus one is constant. Done. Yeah. So this is in terms of temperature and volume. Correct. We can also write down this in terms of pressure and volume. And how do we do that? T we can substitute in terms of pressure and volume. See here. We have this expression, all three expression you should know. First expression is this, TV to the power gamma constant. Gamma minus one equals to constant. We know PV is equals to NRT, one mole we are considering. So temperature is nothing but PV by R, correct, we'll substitute this here. So this is P, V by R into V to the power gamma minus one equals to constant. So further we can write PV to the power gamma equals to constant because R itself a constant, we can write this with this over here. So this is the relation in terms of pressure and volume we have. PV to the power gamma constant. Correct. Could you write down the expression in terms of uh, P and T? P and T. P and T. P and T, if you want to put, 
then volume should be what volume should be rt by p from here you see volume should be r t by p one mole we are considering we'll substitute this volume over here so this is equals to t v is r t by p to the power gamma minus 1 is a constant hence we can write t to the power gamma divided by p to the power gamma minus 1 equals to constant which further we can write p to the power 1 minus gamma into t to the power gamma equals to constant further we can also write this as p to the power or we'll write down this way p into t to the power gamma by 1 minus gamma equals to constant any expression they can give you in the option right this three expression we have condition for adiabatic process done just you divide the entire thing you power it off the entire thing you power it off 1 by 1 minus gamma this side also you can do and this will be a constant only na so this and this will get cancelled you can also do it the whole thing to the power of 1 by gamma okay that's why i said basic understanding you must have then only you can you no know, find out which expression is right or wrong did you get it right if you do it 1 by gamma then we'll have p to the power 1 minus gamma by gamma into t is equals to constant okay all of you understood this correct so we'll wind up the session here one last thing you write down next class we'll start with the comparison of graph okay comparison of graph you must write it down and next class you do tell me that we have to start it from here otherwise no i will forget what we have done we'll do the comparison of isothermal and adiabatic graph and we'll see how to identify the graph of adiabatic and isothermal process okay so heading you write down this from here we'll start in the next class correct okay guys okay thank you so much see you in the next class bye take care